Hi, and welcome to this third model on linear regression. In this model, we are finally going to start with some machine learning. But let us first do a little overview of what we are going to do in this section. So as I said, we are going to do a model, which is linear regression, and we are going to learn what is linear regression. And next, we are going to learn how to train a linear regression model. And then finally, we are going to use this model to predict on new data. So this is going to be our first true machine learning model. And in the next part, we are going to discuss how to evaluate this model. And essentially, this will answer the question, is our model any good? Or should we try another model, for example? To do this, we will introduce the so-called mean square error, which is going to measure the performance of our model. And we are going to learn how to use the mean square error to evaluate our model. Finally, we are going to introduce the notion of test set and training set. And we are, of course, going to explain what test set and training set actually is. Next, we are going to explain the purpose of the test set and the training set. And the final thing we are going to learn is how to split our data set into the test set and training set inside scikit-learn. So let's get started. So let's start with explaining what linear regression actually is. So you see here we have some data points where x here is the features and y is the thing we are going to predict. So a model is going to be to find the line which explains these data points the best. And then we can use this line here if we have a new data point. Then we can go up and read out the prediction from the line here. So essentially, we are trying to find a line which explains the data. So the first thing we are going to note about this model is that it is a so-called regression model. The things here can be any real number on the y-axis here. The next thing is that it is linear, as the name suggests. So it is a linear model. And this essentially means that we are trying to approximate things with lines. Or when we have several features, we are going to do it with plane or other kinds of hyperspaces. So let's say that we have this data set here. And in this case, we have four points. So we have four observation. And each point have an x value or a number of feature and a y value here, which is the one we are going to try to predict. So in this case, four data point, one feature. So the idea of linear regression is that we are trying to find a line which kind of minimizes the distances from all these points. And in this case, we take all the distances to the line and then we take the square and sum them up. So we end up with this number here and what we are going to call the best line that expresses these four data points is going to be the line that minimizes this sum. So it makes it as small as possible. And the process of finding this line is called training the model. So we are given some data, we try to minimize the sum of the square distances. And when we find the line that minimizes all the squared distances, then we are happy and we have our model. So this was the intuition. And next we are going to try to make all of the steps a bit more formal. Okay, so let's try now to do everything just a bit more formal. So first of all, we need some notation. So I'm going to say that we have n plus one observation, and I'm going to say that we have p plus one features. And in this case, we can collect all the different targets into a single vector here. So the first value here is the value of the first observation. The second value here is the value of the second observation and so on down to n here. So note that I start the numbering here on zero because Python starts the numbering on zero. So we collect all the target observation inside a single vector and we call it typically y. So we can do the same thing with the feature observations. So here is the data set containing all the features. 
And I'm going to say that the different columns corresponds to the features. So you see here we have p different columns. And I'm going to say that the observations is going to be rows here. So that means that for the observation zero here, we have a lot of different features that we have measured and a corresponding target here. So let's do an example of this. So in this case, we are going to assume that we have measured the BMI and the age of four different people. So we have four observations. And what we want to predict is the blood sugar level here. So we have four observations and we have two features, namely the BMI and the age. And this is a regression problem because the average blood sugar level is a number. And if we are going to give an example of data, we can, for instance, have the following data here. So here we have a person with BMI of 23 and an age of 39, and the average blood sugar level is 4.2. And here we have another person, which is age 43 and have a BMI of 29, with an average blood sugar level of 8,3, and so on for all the four different observations. So that was some notation for the data, but let's start with now explaining the model. So let xi be the ith observation of x, and we have the corresponding target here, yi. So this is just the ith entry, or really we should talk about i plus one, but in Python it is the ith entry. Then our model is going to be on the form that the predicted value, which we are going to denote by the hat here, is a dot product xi plus a constant b, and a is just a constant vector which we are going to determine in the training step, and the same is true for b. And just a quick reminder, dot product is defined as being the first values multiplied together plus the second values multiplied together and so on, up to the final values multiplied together, and this b here is just plus a constant b. So in the case that we only have one feature, then we have that the prediction is just a line. So what we are going to do in the training step is to find a and b such that the square difference between the predicted value and the actual value is as small as possible. And these were the things we denoted by di squared in the previous drawing. And for now, we are going to say that scikit-learn handle this for us by, for instance, magic, and just finds the line which minimizes this quantity. So in the theory lecture, which is optional, we are going to tell you how we can find this line here and complete the training step. But this is a bit theoretical, so you can choose to skip it. Okay, so how does this model make new predictions? So let's say that we have a new patient which have some features here, which we have measured. And what we want to do is to find the target observation. In the previous example, we want to find the average blood sugar level. In the case of a line, so we only have one feature, we have a data point here, and we are going to go up to our line and then just read off the prediction here. More specifically, we have that the new prediction y hat here is just going to be the a, constant here we found in the training step, and then dot product with x, plus this constant b we also found in the training set. So let's do a quick example where we put it all together. So we have the same data with the BMI, the age, and the average blood sugar level of the person. And then I have plugged the data into scikit-learn, and it says that the a vector should be this vector here, so 0 0.2 in the first component and 0 0.07 in the second. And the b constant here should be minus 1,8. So if we plug it in, our model is going to be this here. So if we have a new data point, so a new patient with a BMI of 25 and an age of 30, we can just plug in 25 in for x0 and 30 in for x1 here. And what we get is this number here. And what the model tells us is that the predicted blood sugar level is going to be 5,8. So this was all the theory for now. And in the next section, we are going to learn how to do this all in scikit-learn. So